everyone, welcome you watching the Wednesday edition of This is Exclusive with me, Shavin Sen. Our focus tonight is on the political fraud that has now erupted in the state of Assam. This is because what the Congress now calls a direct attack on the opposition because of the delimitation order that has come in, saying that the minorities are now being affected in the state of Assam with this redrawing of the constituencies. That's our story number one. Our story number two is with regards to why exactly is the Congress party up in arms with renaming of the Nehru Memorial in the national capital. We'll get you all the latest in this edition of This is Exclusive, but up first, these are the headlines we are tracking for you at this hour. Congress decides to contest on all seven seats. In Delhi, big divide ahead of the third i.n.d.i.a meeting. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak meets uh, Murari Bapu, asserts proud to be Hindu, says Hindu values help him take decisions. Massive protest over Jadapur University ragging, nine arrested in the case so far. President gives approval to Election Commission's delimitation notification. AIUDF says will move Supreme Court. With more landslides triggered by rain's death toll in Himachal Pradesh, now stands at 57. Rescue operations continue. Another attack in Faisalabad. Third such attack in Pakistan. Situation remains crisp. Ladies and gentlemen, the delimitation exercise will soon become a reality in Assam as the President of India has now given the nod to the notification. Now, the approval comes days after the Election Commission published its final report on the delimitation in Assam on 11th of August. In fact, the EC's draft retained the number of Assembly constituencies in Assam at 126 and Lok Sabha seats at 40. Now, the order also proposed to rename some Assembly constituencies and the parliamentary constituencies. Now, the opposition, in fact, is up in arms. They are miffed over this move as, it, as they claim that the move will not safeguard the rights of the minorities in the state. Now what exactly is the delimitation exercise? It's an exercise by which you are redrawing the borders of a particular constituency. Now as far as this proposal is concerned, in which the delimitation has been done in a manner which the opposition says is looking at only minorities constituencies where minorities are dominant their constituencies have been redrawn they say that uh, you know this is a direct attack against the opposition parties the AIUDF and also some parties which have been espousing the indigenous Assamese cause they too are now up in arms take a look at this report and then we go across to my colleague Anirudh and in fact in a short while from now the leader of the opposition Deva Brata Saikya is going to join us on this broadcast. It's a milestone in Assam's history as the President of India has given nod to the delimitation exercise in the state. The approval comes days after the Election Commission of India published the final order for delimitation of parliamentary and assembly constituency for Assam, retaining the power of assembly seats at 126 while for Lok Sabha at 14. The move for delimitation of assembly and parliamentary constituencies in Assam, which was notified by the Election Commission of India, has been approved by the President of India. This brings to an end all the political discussion and debate centering the delimitation process in the state. Following the notification, nine seats in the Legislative Assembly are allocated for scheduled castes, which was earlier eight, while one seat is allocated for scheduled caste in the Lok Sabha. 
One assembly seat in autonomous districts of West Karbi Anglong has also been increased. Assam Chief Minister shared the news on X, formerly known as Twitter. The opposition has expressed discontent. Oh, it's very clear if you look at the delimitation of the Assam, it is a targeting of the opposition seats. The seats occupied, Lok Sabha seats occupied by the Congress party in Kolyabor, Nogao and Borpeta have been especially targeted by the BJP. The AIUDF at the same time has asserted to move Supreme Court against the notification. As the government argues, the delimitation exercise will safeguard boundaries of territorial constituencies. They claim it to be a significant boost for Assam. Bureau Report, Republic TV. So just let's put this into perspective. What are the constituencies that are likely to be redrawn? And how exactly does that really have an impact at the ground? As uh, Gaurav Gogoi of the Congress Party is essentially alleging that this is only targeting the those very seats which are occupied by the opposition parties. Joining us on this uh, broadcast is my colleague Anirudh uh, He's joining us from Assam and the leader of the opposition, Mr. Saikya, is joining us on this broadcast. I'll go across to Mr. Saikya once uh, I believe uh, his audio as well as video is already. But before that, a quick response uh, from my colleague Anirudh, just uh, for our viewers to understand, our viewers outside Assam to understand why this exercise is becoming so very political. Let's try and explain this to you. Now, what you're looking at right now is that the assembly seats for the scheduled tribes have also been increased from 16 to 19. But some of these constituencies, which are Muslim dominated, especially in Borpeta, in Nogao, as well as in Salismara, these are places, Darang to also being the other place. These are constituencies which are considered to be Muslim dominated and those constituencies have been redrawn. In fact, there is also an allegation that has been leveled by the AIUDF saying that only Muslim communities are being targeted. But at the same time, you also have indigenous Assamese groups that have been up in arms. Anirudh, what's the, what is it that the opposition parties are really against it? Because the Assam chief minister has made it abundantly clear that this is going to be a reality. And in fact, he says that administrative reforms will be brought in because of the changes that are being made sub districts will be created and the chief minister believes that this is going to bring in the much needed reform important move given the fact that uh, the limitation was uh, pending in the state of assam since the 1980s uh, after the assam accord was signed the nrc was not updated and when the delimitation move was made in 2007 uh, the all assam student union and several other organization protested against the move and the president of India had to especially notify uh, that the delimitation in the state of Assam will not be carried out given the fact that the, uh, the NRC is not updated. Now that the NRC has been updated but though the final notification in that regard is pending, the delimitation exercise was carried out and the state government is of the view that this move was to safeguard the indigenous Assamese people. And that is the reason why uh, many assembly seats have been decreased, particularly in the minority dominated areas. Minority dominated areas have been impacted because of this uh, delimitation exercise. And that is the reason why they are protesting. But as far as the indigenous Assamese people are concerned, as far as the indigenous organization, the parent organization, you can say the All Assam Student Union, uh, the All Assam Student Union is not opposing this delimitation uh, move by the uh, Election Commission of India, and they have in fact welcomed it. Uh, and when the Election Commission of India was in, uh, in Assam, they had several rounds of sitting with all the opposition parties prior to the draft delimitation was published, and also before the final publication of uh, uh, this uh, draft, the final uh, delimitation notification, they met with all the stakeholders, all the political parties, all the non-political parties, more than 500 representation were given to the Election Commission of India. Then, And the Election Commission of India gave a patient hearing to all the more than 500 um, petitions which were filed before them. And after that, uh, this redrawing has been done. Many constituencies have been affected in order and given, uh, keeping in view the demography of each and every constituency, the the uh, the socio-cultural and also also the 
aspect of uh, various uh, tribes, aspiration of various tribes, uh, as well as uh, Sedulka's groups were keep, uh, kept in consideration while right. re this redrawing was done. And that is why uh, right. in some cases, Anirudh. in some instances, it has been found that uh, the geographical uh, continuity was not kept in mind. And that right. is one particular reason that the opposition have been uh, have been up in arms again. Right. Anirudh, uh, I'm the, sorry to interrupt uh, you because Mr. Saikia... Commission. Yes. Okay. Anirudh, I'm sorry to interrupt you because Mr. Saike is uh, joining us on this broadcast. He's the leader of the opposition. Mr. Saike, thank you very much for joining us on this broadcast. The argument that has been put <coughs> forth by your leader, Gaurav Kogoi, is the fact that those very seats which are occupied by the opposition parties, they are being targeted. Now, the counter to that argument is this, that it's not only Muslim-dominated constituencies that have been affected. In fact, the indigenous Assamese cause, those groups that have been espousing the indigenous Assamese cause, they too have now raised their concerns. The question here is that, are we perhaps only making it that this is all about Muslim community being affected? Because if that was the case, then the indigenous Assamese groups, they would not have been up in arms too. Uh, actually, uh, as we all know, uh, the Demitation Commission was formed in 2002. It published the draft in 2007. There was protest in Assam after publication of the draft. And the main reason being that it is not based on a national register of citizenship, number one. And number two, based on the NRC, we are supposed to get a uh, new voter list where there will not be any foreigner. So this issue was not settled at that time as such it was uh, deferred then now all of a sudden uh, election commission was authorized after the second delimitation commission for assam was announced in 2019 i believe under uh, justice ranjana desai uh, the election commission took up the work okay fine but uh, the main issue for all of us was that uh, the delimitation is being done without settling the issues for which it was deferred in 2008, number one. And number two, uh, the delimitation, purpose of delimitation is that uh, it should be for equitable distribution of population, not on population density. And uh, there should be contiguity of the area and all that. But in the draft, we have seen uh, these issues are not adhered to because the main uh, idea was only through delimitation commission. Delimitation commission has set up some rules and guidelines. These all are violated by election commission of India at the behest of the ruling party. And after the publication of the uh, draft and then the final, we have found out that uh, polarization uh, has taken place and in many areas in many areas um, uh, this uh, has affected even in my own district the name of one gram panchayat is missing from the now published final so uh, people but living in one Mr. gram panchayat are not here yes Mr. Saika, sorry to interrupt you, but you've not responded to what the Chief Minister had to say. The Chief Minister says that this exercise is essentially going to help in perhaps bringing in the much needed administrative reforms. He says sub-districts will be created. So don't you think somewhere down the line, perhaps the opposition parties are also jumping the gun and narrowing it down to simply saying that Muslim, constitu Muslim dominated constituencies are being affected. Is that being very simplistic in your analysis? See, uh, these sub-districts, uh, I don't know uh, if I say there are now more than um, uh, 45 or 50 sub-SDM offices. So already this was there. Then they have said that per LSC there will be one sub-district. But um, I don't know if they will be able to uh, help the people. Because even if in the district minister's office, 
we don't find sufficient number of people working. Now they have said that it will be digital and all, but now due to breakdown of uh, the internet and all, all villages were supposed to be under uh, digital sewa, but none of them are functional. So it, these are all uh, just uh, right. talk. In practice, this will not happen and now we will have more problem by creation of sub-district and all because uh, they will not be t able to take right. decisions and ultimately it will be further delay the people's right. delivery of service. Well, thank you very, very much, Mr. Saikya, for joining us on this broadcast. The Congress now putting across their perspective as far as the TV limitation order is a concern. The Chief Minister still assertive says that the work will be done. Remains to be seen whether the AIUDF will be now taking it to the Supreme Court. Shifty focused out on the other top story that we are tracking. Now, Amit, the row over the renaming of the Nehru Memorial, which is only getting bigger with the Congress attacking the government over the move. Recently, the Congress General Secretary, Jairam Ramesh, uh, tweeted and uh, said that the Prime Minister is essentially destroying Nehru and Nehru's legacy. Now, that's the position that has been taken by the Congress Party. Take a look at this report. We've also spoken to some of the officials to get you a better understanding of why perhaps this change was made by the Prime Minister. We are right now inside the newly built gallery section of the Prime Minister Museum Library. You can see this is the new addition of the newly inaugurated pra Pradhan Mantri Sangralaya, which was inaugurated last year in April by the Prime Minister of India. And this is the entrance of the newly built uh, building in the uh, museum. It has all the display of the previous Prime Ministers of India with their terms situated next to their pictures and this way leads to the library and the gallery upstairs. This is the look which is now also open for the public to view. The name changing Rao of the Museum of the Nehru has now created a fresh political slugfest between the Congress and the central government which both the parties are alleging on each other. The Congress at one part is saying that this attempt to rename the Nehru Museum Memorial is an attempt to remove the legacy of the Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, while the BJP is saying by doing so they are giving equal space and equal representation and equal uh, space to every Prime Minister of India who has served in the to the country this name changing process uh, was done uh, on august 14th but the name changing process also began the, it was mentioned in the meeting that was done in june this year which was also presided by defense minister rajnath singh and in the meeting it was decided that the name will now be changed to prime minister museum library this is simran with camera person parvez for republic you see, earlier we had the Nehru Museum here. Some years ago, a decision was taken to build the Prime Minister's Museum here. So, uh, the remit of the institution expanded. It has widened. Okay? So, the diversification and democratization of this institution's remit, in my view, uh, is what happened in uh, recent times. And consequent to that, um, there has to be a name that is in consonance with the new responsibilities that this institution has. And that is how the name change has taken place. It's now called Prime Minister's Museum and Library. I don't think anybody should have any objection to that. We have had 15 Prime Ministers to date. As we go along, we will have more and more Prime Ministers. This is the first institution in the country which showcases the work of Prime Ministers which has never been done before. In fact, it was Prime Minister Modi's idea that there must be a museum of Prime Ministers. And then, at some point, he gave that responsibility to this institution. And that is when this work began some years ago. And finally, you are in this new building where we showcase the work of 14 Prime Ministers. The hate on Nehru from RSS uh, Bharatiya Jan Sang, PJP. Uh, Mr. Modi has implemented it. 
the hate towards Modi is known from the RSS and others. The four, uh, the sacrifices of uh, Pandit Nehru, who was in jail for nine years in the, when the freedom struggle. For that, after that, he was 16 years Prime Minister. Lal Bahadur Shastri ji had the idea to open this Nehru Memorial Library in 1964. And uh, Dr. Radhanjendra Prasad, the then President of India, inaugurated it. This is the history of that memorial. Therefore, let us... Now what Mr. Modi has insulted, he has insulted Lal Bahadur Shastri and he has insulted Radha, Radha Krishnan by his one action. Well, getting in some more breaking news right now. The Aam Aadmi Party has responded on the issue of Congress going solo in, in the national capital for the general elections. Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson said that though the decision of attending the next uh, meeting of the alliance will be taken up by the top leadership, they have indicated that there is absolutely no purpose of attending the meeting if at all the Congress Party has taken a position like this. In fact, the Aam Aadmi Party says that it is the Congress which had reached out to the Aam Aadmi Party because they realize that uh, perhaps the Congress has no relevance in the national capital and the alliance is going to keep the Bharti Janta Party at bay. With the Congress now making a unilateral decision that perhaps they are going to go solo in the upcoming polls, this certainly has not gone down well with the Aam Aadmi Party. Not the first time that both the parties have been at loggerheads. Ahead of the first meeting of uh, the alliance in Patna, Aam Aadmi Party essentially wanted the Congress to take a public position as far as uh, the ordinance in Delhi is concerned. Priyanka Kakkar of the Aam Aadmi Party has now responded. Let's listen. अगर कांग्रेस ने मन बना लिया है कि वो दिल्ली में अलायंस नहीं करेगी तो फिर इंडिया अलायंस का कोई मतलब नहीं है अपना टाइम वेस्ट करने का कोई मतलब नहीं है हम सोचेंगे कि हमारा शीर्ष नेतृत्व अगली मीटिंग इंडिया अलायंस की अटेंड करते हैं कि नहीं अगर कांग्रेस ने मन बना लिया है कि वो दिल्ली में अलायंस नहीं करेगी तो फिर इंडिया अलायंस का कोई मतलब नहीं है अपना टाइम वेस्ट करने का कोई मतलब नहीं है हम सोचेंगे कि हमारा शीर्ष नेतृत्व अगली मीटिंग इंडिया अलायंस की अटेंड करते हैं कि नहीं Congress leader Alka Lamba has now spoken to Republic TV. Remember, soon after that meeting that took place at the Congress headquarters with Malikarjun Kharge as well as KC Venugopal and Rahul Gandhi, it was Alka Lamba who made that announcement that the Congress party decided to go solo in the upcoming general elections in the national capital. Listen in to what the Congress leader had to say. देखिए मैं फिर कहूं आज 19वां नंबर दिल्ली का था इससे पहले 18 राज्यों की कांग्रेस के जो लीडरशिप है उनसे मीटिंग हुई लोकसभा के चुनावों को लेकर हुई आज 19वां राज्य दिल्ली था दिल्ली की लीडरशिप की हाई कमान पूर्व कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष राहुल गांधी जी खरगे जी और केसी विनुगोपाल जी के साथ हुई और अभी इस समय 20वां राज्य झारखंड की मीटिंग चल रही है स्वाभाविक है जब राज्यवार मीटिंग हुई तो दिल्ली के अंदर सात सीटें हैं इन सात सीटों पर कितना मजबूत संगठन है क्या तैयारी है इस पे हमारी चार घंटे बात हुई और हर नेता को दो दो तीन तीन पांच पांच मिनट बोलने को मिला इसमें कहीं पर भी ये बात नहीं हुई कि आम आदमी पार्टी को लेकर गठबंधन हो किन सीटों पर हो नहीं हो क्योंकि ये बात इंडिया में होगी ये बात इंडिया की जो तीसरी बैठक है स्वाभाविक है राज्यवार जब मीटिंग होगी इसमें होगी लेकिन हमसे जब पूछा गया तो हमने यही बोला कि दिल्ली में आम आदमी पार्टी के साथ अगर हमें जाना है जो अभी इंडिया का वो समूह का है तो आम आदमी पार्टी के दो बड़े नेता इस समय भ्रष्टाचार के आरोपों में जेल में हैं 
सबको मालूम है तीसरा शिकंजा दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री पर कस सकता है जिस तरह के हालात हैं ऐसे में उनके साथ जाने से बहुत सवाल उठेंगे ये जरूर चर्चा आई ये भी चर्चा आई कि दिल्ली में सरकार आम आदमी की है और नगर निगम में भी वो है अगर इन लोगों को लेकर कोई मुद्दा आता है तो हमें चुप रहना है क्या करना है तो स्वाभाविक सा जवाब था कि बिल्कुल हमें लोगों के बीच में लोगों के साथ खड़े रहना है सामने चाहे दिल्ली सरकार नगर निगम या देश में कोई भी है हमें तीनों से दिल्ली के लोगों की लड़ाई को निरंतर उनके हकों के लिए लड़ना है स्वाभाविक से बात हुई पर यह कहना कि हम अपने दम पर जाएंगे ऐसा नहीं है इस पर कोई फैसला ही नहीं है पर यह था राहुल गांधी जी ने जरूर कहा हमें मजबूत संगठन के साथ मात्र सात महीने बचे हैं और सातों सीटों पर हमें अपनी तैयारियों को पूरा रखना है लेकिन दिल्ली यूनिट ये चाहती है कि कांग्रेस अकेले कॉन्टेस्ट करे आम आदमी पार्टी के साथ बिना अलायंस के कॉन्टेस्ट करे ये बात आपके द्वारा अनिल चौधरी जी के द्वारा और जो तमाम दिल्ली प्रदेश के लीडर्स उनके द्वारा द्वारा ये बात रखी गई थी मीटिंग देखिए कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष और राहुल जी को जरूर कहा गया की उन्नीस में हम मजबूती से लड़े और दूसरे नंबर पर रहे अब भारत जोड़ो यात्रा के बाद या जिस तरह से भाजपा On the other side the big exclusive now coming in Alka Lamba speaks to Republic TV we'll get you the latest on the other side the Ahmad Bay party has also now responded